Welcome to Insight, a concise comment on current issues from the Jubilee Center. Uh, today at our winter conference, we're talking to Dr. Michael Schluter, founder and chairman of the Jubilee Center. Michael, last night you spoke to us about new patterns of growth. Uh, can you tell us why do we need a new pattern of growth anyway? What's wrong with the current one? Well, something is definitely wrong with the current one. I think many of us can see it as we walk out of our front doors and into the shopping malls. Um, people seem preoccupied with shopping and with accumulating more and more stuff. And it just seems that as people think of themselves more and more as individuals and more and more about their own individual rights, that it's harder to convince them of the need to take action to protect their neighbor who may be very far off in um, Bangladesh or somewhere and who is at the threat of flooding or whatever it may be. So there's not the political will to do something about the big environmental problems that we're facing. And the same applies with the big institutions. They are organized in order to serve the value of anonymous shareholders. We don't know who these people really are. They hide behind big institutions, pension funds, managed funds, whoever they are. As long as these big corporations are serving these shareholders, it's very difficult for them to adequately take account of the environmental costs of their actions. There are increasing rules to try and make them do that. There is a lot of goodwill among individual people, but the system as a whole is operating against them. We need a new system. So Michael, one of the questions that we've been discussing here is, is it legitimate to be seeking growth at all, uh, given the fact that if the whole world lived to the same standard of living that we enjoy in the West, it is said we need three planets uh, to cope with it. Mm. Uh, is it legitimate as a goal? I think from a Christian point of view, um, the Bible speaks about the idea of increase, but it wants to keep the pattern of obtaining that increase within certain boundaries. There are social boundaries, economic boundaries, political boundaries, and environmental boundaries. But as long as you're operating within the boundaries that God sets down, then there seems to be no objection to increase. In fact, uh, it seems that the Bible teaches that if one is following these rules of engagement, if you like, with the economic process that God will, gi will give you his blessing and that will involve increase. Mm. Now, the trick is what, what is it that is the goal of the process? What is it that provides the framework of these rules? And that is yeah. that we shouldn't be simply doing it for ourselves. We shouldn't be doing it to make our own personal lives um, better in a selfish kind of way. We should be concerned about the pattern of relationships mm. across society how the rich relate to the poor, how one ethnic group relates to another, how the educated relate to the uneducated, how the urban relate to the rural. So these relationships need to be put right. And as long as those relationships are being put right, we will be able to afford it. There will be the resources to do it. I think last night you helpfully discussed the fact that being made in God's image, we have this uh, innate desire to be creators. Uh, yes. Absolutely, and you can't really hold that down. People mm. are innately creative, yeah. and unless you force people uh, not to create things, they will naturally create them. Yeah. So the key thing is to channel mm. that energy. So tell us a little bit about how we do that. I mean, you, you, you outlined a range of different boundary lines that, that we derive from Scripture. Can you just give us a hint of what those major lines are? Yes, uh, one would be that we must take care of our social capital, our family and community relationships. So we don't want uh, high levels of mobility of labor. We don't want people constantly moving so that they are living far away from their families and, and from their traditional communities, we want rootedness. Uh, we want um, people to invest directly in companies rather than put the money into some managed fund which then goes they know not where. So we want people to be directly engaged with the investment process and with the productive and business process, not at one step removed. Um, we want um, a political style of operating where the key decisions about welfare and criminal justice are made locally and not made by central government, which is far away. So people feel a sense of responsibility to their local situation. And that carries over into the environment because if people have a sense of responsibility, for example, for the welfare of the community, they're much more likely to take care of the natural world in the particular part of the world where God's put them. So these things are all interconnected with, with each other. We want a world where we avoid big centers of power and we empower people to live and work and, uh, and involve themselves locally. Michael Schluter, thank you very much.